Welcome to the Virtual CPA Success Show, where we're 100% focused on helping service-based businesses achieve success. Are you a business owner interested in learning how to scale your business? Has your business reached over $1 million in annual revenue? Then this podcast is for you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's show. Uh, Very excited about today's topic. We're going to talk about an area that is um, pretty um, common topics, at least from other CPAs I talk to. And um, I'm really excited to have uh, Donna Sadula here. So Donna, welcome to the show. Hey, Jamie. Thank you so much for having me. And then again, once again, joined by Adam Hill. All right, Donna, so I kind of did a little bit of a preview there, but I know um, prior to talking about this, we're going to talk about LinkedIn. So let us give us a little bit of your background and kind of how uh, you're connected to LinkedIn. Sure. So um, I have a company. It's called Vision Board Media, and we work with executives, entrepreneurs, professionals from all over the world, and we help them brand themselves on LinkedIn. And it was something that I, I noticed years ago. I mean, I started my business in 2009, and you know, back then... It was something that I was seeing all the time, which was, you know, people weren't filling out their their profile. They were missing opportunities. They were just copying and pasting an old, out of date resume. Um, and I thought, you know, there's a need <laughs> for a service to help people tell their story, but do it in an optimized way so they can collide with opportunity. Um, and that's when I, I hung out the shingle. Um, since then, we've worked with over 6,000 executives and entrepreneurs from all over the world. I have over 20 writers on my team, and uh, we're, we're making a difference every day. Wow. Yeah, I mean, LinkedIn's huge for us um, as well. Like, we've, um, we've never went down the paid social, you know, done any paid media. So we've always done organic stuff. And then, you know, recently over the last couple of years, really focused pretty heavily on social media. And I'd throw LinkedIn obviously in there. And from a professional organization standpoint, that's, you know, probably number one um, as far as that goes. Yeah. But I agree. It's like one of those things where, and I'll be interested, I've got like a million questions for you, um, you know, just because, you know, I've, I've done my I've done my part. I filled out my my LinkedIn. I have you know a couple thousand connections, and anytime I do connect with people, I try to be very selective, and then um, you know I try to reach out to them. And a lot of times, you know, it'll be accompanied by like a uh, an invite actually to my calendar because it's one of those things. Like a lot of times, it's very hollow. Whenever you're like, hey, I'd like to connect and blah blah blah, join your network. I mean, the one cool thing is, I guess, on one end they get the feed, which you'll probably talk to us about, like whenever you're talking. Oh, yeah. um, but I do like to at least like genuinely know the person if I can. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Well, it's it's a different world now. I mean, back in the early days of LinkedIn, if you wanted to, you know, see a person's updates, if you wanted to, you know, really interact with them, you had to be connected. Now they have the ability to follow. So it's not as um as important, right? So like you can actually say, yeah, I want my network to be a little tighter. I want it to be strong. And I want to make sure that when I do connect that, you know, I'm forging a deeper relationship with them. Yeah. So would you say that's one of the keys to LinkedIn? I mean, is that how you recommend people using it is to have a, a tighter network and really use the um, the following or, or is there really no one shoe, one, one shoe size fits all here? Yeah, it's it's different for everyone, you know, and, and I have a, a methodology. I, I call it SOAR, SOAR to success on LinkedIn. And SOAR is an acronym. It stands for uh, strategize, optimize, amplify and relate. And if you do that consistently, you're going to find amazing success on LinkedIn. But that first part is, you know, you have to strategically really understand why you're on LinkedIn. You know, some people are on it for job search, you know, and so they're going to have a totally different way of using it than a person who's on it as, you know, perhaps a a sole proprietor, an entrepreneur who's looking for business development and prospecting, which is different than that executive who is doing it because they really want to showcase their expertise and they're doing it for reputation management and branding, right? So it, everyone's, everyone's path can, can be a little different. And, you know, for myself, you know, I, I speak, I'm, I, I do these podcasts and, and it's hard for me to have that connect button out there, you know, cause you have 30, you have a 30,000 limit. And it's easy to hit that limit, believe it or not. So you have to turn on, you know, that creator mode and you want to put out that follow button, 
you know, because that's that works better for those people who are showcasing their their expertise. But for you know a business owner, it might be a little different. They might say, you know what, I want to turn up in a lot of searches. When I collide with a lot of opportunity, and the bigger my network, the more networks I'm in, the more opportunity I am to turn up on in more searches. So, how many people do you work with that have? Um started the strategy, but then it's, it's changed while you're working with them. Cause I can see someone being in that first stage where you said, okay, I'm really just there looking for a job. And then, you know, they've found that job and they've been there a couple of years and they've kind of moved into that. Hey, I need to help this company I'm working for get business. And then, you know, obviously that can keep going. Some people do. Oh, it does. That. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. I mean, sometimes it's, it's almost funny how when you showcase your best, you attract the best. And, and I see this happening over and over and over again. A lot of times people, they just don't ever really think, okay, why am I doing this? Where am I going? How do I want to be perceived? What is my story? Uh, they have no real clarity. And when you have no clarity, you're not attracting anything specific, right? But as soon as you know, we sit down and we work with these our clients and we start to get focused, and we find that clarity and we find their story. We really talk about you know what do you love and where do you want to go? And let's stop aligning you to this past life, you know, these things that you did a long time ago that you don't want to do anymore. And let's really think about that future. It's crazy how the universe delivers. It's, it's bizarre how that happens. Yeah, I can see how like, uh, you know, as, as you were talking about the executive and the branding and, and that and that such, but what we do a lot of times is we work with other CPA firms and we help them, you know, navigate how to deliver VCFO services um, because that's a, you know, it's a little bit of a niche. It's, you know, how do you work closely with clients on a regular basis and talk to them, you know, weekly. Most of the time in our profession, we're talking to folks once a year, maybe quarterly, you know, as they, they call that kind of a thing, but this is a very proactive service. So it's a little bit different. And inside of that, we're always saying, Hey, you got to create demand um, for yourself and for your product. And so we are really big into, um, you know, developing a niche, like be, you know, the subject matter expert in a particular area, those kind of things. And so the next question is always like, cool, you showed me how to do it. Now, where do I get my, where do I get my clients? So show me how to, show me how to get all those folks in. And it's like, well, okay. So I'm not a marketing person. I can tell you what we do, um, which is again, a ton of SEO and social media. Um, but as in terms of like strategizing, you know, the, the, the S of your stuff, um, how does that, you know, what would, should somebody be thinking about whenever they want to, you know, start putting together that strategy? When should they come to somebody like you to, to help them kind of figure that out? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's when you, you start to to recognize that as you are out there creating the audience, as you are going to be selling, you're going to be interacting with, you know, external parties, people are going to be checking you out, right? They're going they want to know who it is that they're going to be talking to. They want to know who, you know, check them out or, you know, however it might be, who's who's speaking at that conference, whatever it might be. And, you know, you want to make sure that you know, one, there's always, like I said, this strategy, you have to know your audience, you should know your keywords, you should know, you know, if a person's searching for you, what words are they using? Um, you want to know the hashtags, you want to have a really good, clear vision of the audience and what they need to know about you, like you need that, but then you need to optimize, right? You need to have a profile that that tells that story, that has the right keywords. So you can collide with searches because there might be a lot of situations where there are companies out there that are looking for a person that provides those services. And, you know, by, by doing those keyword searches within LinkedIn, we want those profiles to pop up. And that's like a really easy inbound type of lead, you know, potentially. But you're not going to get found if your if your profile doesn't contain those keywords. Okay. So maybe I'm using my LinkedIn all wrong all these days. It just seems like it just seems like um, I don't do a whole lot of searching in LinkedIn. Um, I will sometimes like if I if I'm looking for somebody that has a certain subject matter expert. So I guess that's not totally uh, that's probably not totally true, but for the most part, it, the feed and everything that I look at, you know, much mm -hmm. like, you know, it's kind of dialed in like Facebook and that kind of stuff these days. A lot of that comes just from the connections and the people that I am following that I've already connected with. Yeah. So, so if I was, if, so for instance, um, just to kind of put you on the spot and get a little technical, mm -hmm. if, if I said, Hey, I want to work with 
dentists. And those are the folks that I, you know, obviously build my profile up to, to speak into my, you know, background working with dentists and how I do all that kind of stuff. But that's just kind of the, you know, just kind of the surface. That's the, you know, the, the, right. the face. Um, what other kind of things should people be thinking about doing in order to, you know, reach that crowd? You know, I think the first thing is, you know, definitely tell the story in your profile <laughs> that you have this, you have this industry experience. This is, you know, your, your, your niche, your segment, um, and you have all this experience. That's an important aspect. Um, but then you want to go in and, you know, start to do searches. And you can go in and do advanced search and say, I want to talk to anyone who has dentist or dentistry on their profile, or maybe as listed as their current experience. And you only want to do it within this certain, um, you know, area. And, and then start to look and maybe see which ones really seem like these are, you know, a really good fit. And if they're a good fit, what you can do is follow them. And then what you can do is if they look like they're active on LinkedIn, not only do you follow them, but you hit that little star icon that's now on the upper right hand corner of everyone's profile. If you're connected or you follow them, that turns on the alerts. So whenever they do post, you get notified. So then as you're just going about your day, you'll see these notifications. Maybe that dentist posted something on LinkedIn. You could immediately pop in there and comment, like, and you could start to forge a relationship with that person. And then maybe down the line in like a week or two, um, maybe you want to reach out and say, hey, I've really been enjoying your, your content. They know who you are because they've seen that you've interacted with them. And then maybe you send them that, that link, Adam, that you were talking about earlier and get them on the phone to talk. Okay. Yeah, I guess it could work the same way with other professionals too that are in kind of the same space too, not just your target audience, but maybe you find somebody that's doing a podcast or, you know, doing something like that and you can say, hey, you're hitting the same audience that I work with, you know, maybe we can get together and, and talk or do whatever. So make professional connections that way a little bit within that, um, within that niche as well. So. Yeah, and that's, that's, you know, it's the networking aspect of, you know, using LinkedIn as, as a way to, to connect and engage and interact with people. You know, I think for a long time, most LinkedIn users, they would log in and they would maybe silently, silently scroll through that newsfeed. And they really weren't engaging with that content. They were looking at it, but they weren't doing much with it. And, you know, the way the algorithm works now is they want, they want engagement. And when a post gets a lot of engagement, that's when it gets that viral quality. You know, it shows up on more people's feeds and you, you get you know, more eyeballs. So, you know, even if you're not someone who's constantly posting, you don't really have to. I mean, you can actually just, inter, you know, engage with the content that's already there. And the way LinkedIn is working is if you do look at your newsfeed, a lot of those posts that you're seeing that show up on that LinkedIn feed, you're seeing it not because they're first degree connections, but because a first degree or a second degree, con degree connection interacted with it. Oh, right. So it's a it's it's an interesting way of exploding out of your network into other people's networks to get noticed and seen. So so how long until we see LinkedIn videos of people saying like they do in YouTube videos, like hit the star button or anything like that? Is that, is that, the, ne is that I, the next step? <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, I've been finding that I haven't seen a lot of people talking about that star icon on the profiles. Um, but to me, it's this, they, they, they put it out there just recently. I mean, just a few weeks ago. But to me, it's this amazing, amazing functionality, a feature that we've been wanting for a long time. So I do think we're going to start seeing people say, hit that, hit that star button. Oh, okay. So that's not just in like the premium account then that's on the, the baseline connections. Okay. Because uh, I know the premium account has a lot of that, that other advanced stuff. But I don't know, one of my funny stories like a long time ago, and, and I'm not a Facebooker or any of that kind of stuff. Like I don't have Facebook. For the most part, I'm off the grid. But I've, you know, LinkedIn. I just remember a long time ago, I was going to interact with one. And I did it on accident. I was actually sending a message to my partner. It was some big post about some release of software. And I just like trash talked the software really quick because I was like, I didn't realize I was like posting to the, to the universe. And I was just I like, uh, yeah, I don't think so. Way off base. Like this doesn't do this any anymore. Like, 
wow, they're totally wrong, you know, and I thought I was just messaging him and sharing the article to him, and I shared it to everybody, and then all of a sudden, I just got, like, like, 50 comments right underneath that. Luckily, everybody was like, oh, yeah, no, I agree, it doesn't do that anymore, and I was just like, oh, no, I just posted that to everybody, like, I was like, what did I say? Make sure that I wasn't, uh, I didn't say something, like, totally unprofessional. Yeah, luckily, it was, uh, yeah, luckily, it was PG, and I was just like, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to interact anymore. But at anymore. the same time, <laughs> yeah, but but that tells you something, though, Adam, doesn't it? I think I think people like that a level of vulnerability, a level of honesty, you know. And I, I I'm seeing within LinkedIn a, a huge shift. You know, at one time it was nothing but professional, career oriented stuff, and. And in some ways, it was a little boring, right? Like, you really didn't think, like, let me go on LinkedIn to waste some time. You know, like, you want to go somewhere else where people are behaving badly. Right. <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah. you know? but, Unintentionally. But I think, you know, I think, I think with, like, with, with LinkedIn, and I think it was really the pandemic, in my mind, that signaled this, this change, is that, you know, suddenly people are working from home, you know, you don't have that water cooler where you can gather like you used to, um, you, you turn on the Zoom, you know, the Zoom room, and suddenly people could see your bedroom behind you. And like, you kind of opened up a little bit more than we had in the past. And I think you're seeing that in the way people on LinkedIn are behaving. It's a little bit more personal. It's a little bit more vulnerable. It's a little bit more interesting and, and fun. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think the way the way I like to use LinkedIn and maybe I'm abnormal here is to me it's it's a first impression. So if I'm gonna if I'm gonna meet with a um, prospective client or if I'm gonna meet with someone that's trying to sell me something because I'm serious about it, the first place I'll go is their website, of course. But that's obviously very scripted and this is exactly who we are and what they do. But then the second place I'll go is their LinkedIn. And you know if you go to Adam's LinkedIn, I'm sure he got comments buried now because he has videos of podcasts, he has videos of him doing TikTok, he has articles, he has all this like content out there that he's done. And so I get a pretty good first impression of Adam prior to going into that sales call. And that's a lot of times how I use LinkedIn is, okay, I know I need to talk to someone. I search them in LinkedIn and then I find out more about them. Oh, yeah. You can also, what I like to do is, you know, if someone approaches me and they're like, oh, I want to do business with you. And, you know, we're this big wig consulting agency and we're going to be able to do all this stuff for you. It's nice to go to LinkedIn, go to their company page, click on the employees and see that they have one person working with them. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, that's like, true. Yeah. That's, uh... You know, it's like that sole CEO. <laughs> There's no one right, else. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, we would have got busted a long time ago. We intentionally made Summit CPA Summit CPA for, because uh, it was just Jody and I, and we're like, oh, people won't know if there's two of us or 200 of us. Um, but I guess if they would have checked out our LinkedIn profile, they'd have been like, oh, there's only two of them. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, well, I mean, with some companies, it's it's expected. But to me, there are enough companies out there that are pretending, you know, they're cloaking what's what's true. There's others who, you know, like we are, you know, we are who we are. And that's that's fine. But I, I like that you can use LinkedIn to really dial in and get a better sense of who's there, where do they work? You know, you get, just get a better well, taste. Well, and I think what I probably use it most for doing the same kind of thing, like if I'm trolling, it's usually not the articles and, and things of that nature that probably get you a little bit more prominence with it. I'm usually looking at their work history, like whenever I look at people, because I'm always like, huh, where were they before they were here or before there? And then it's like, all of a sudden, you might have a connection or be like, oh, they're from there. So mm -hmm. they probably know and get this person or whatever. So, um, and then also um, looking to see who their connections are, like shared connections. That's always fun oh, too. Yeah. And then of course you talk to them and it's like, oh, you know, Donna and like, who? <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> they were connected with you. And they're like, I don't know who you're talking about. So that's the only bad thing is like, it definitely does feel like it needs to get a little bit more uh, intimate from, from that standpoint. That's why I've like tried really hard over the last year or two to just be again more selective with the folks that I do let into the network I don't try to just get to you know 30,000 or whatever um so I, and again I don't know if that's the I was gonna say I don't know if that's the the best solution because you know what Jamie was talking about as well was like and what you're talking about is there's you know there's a personal responsibility there to interact and do those kind of things and of course you don't want to be inauthentic um but there are services out there like yours who I assume would you know, for the people that are super busy and can't give the time and attention to this is, 
as they should or could in order to kind of build this? I mean, how do you work with and help, you know, how do, how do people that, you know, either A, don't have the experience and confidence in doing it, or B, don't have the time, how do they, you know, find resources to be able to help them kind of do a lot of this heavy lifting? Yeah, you know, with with my with my website, it's linkedin-makeover.com. And we've got tons of free resources. Um, we have a LinkedIn headline generator. We have this like really um, awesome faux text creator. So you can bold text on your profile and in posts and, you know, format it. So we've got tons of free stuff there. But where I'm going with this is all of our services are listed. You can see a complete description and you can see the price points. So it's one of those like... I'm kind of a weird business owner in that regard that, you know, I'm like transparent with that stuff. But, um, you know, the way we work with our, our clients is we always have, we have different levels of service depending on what their needs are. You know, some people come to us and they're like, I just need help branding. I just need help, you know, telling my story, having a strong profile. And that's all I need. You know, there's other people who say, you know, I need help to really not only understand my story, to write that story, but also, you know, help me engage and understand how to use LinkedIn and give me that training and that support. So it, it you know, it just depends on what their needs are. And we fit them into whichever service, you know, makes the most sense. Um, but there is a huge need. And, and, LinkedIn is, it's just a fabulous platform. You know, it's a platform that I really think more and more people should be paying attention to because it's, it, oftentimes I think people think, oh, let me get on LinkedIn because I need, I need prospects or let me get on LinkedIn because uh, I need a job. Like they always go on LinkedIn because they need something. But, you know, I, I really feel that you should just be on LinkedIn, just be present on LinkedIn, know that it's there, pop in, interact, engage, network, and just have it there for your career, throughout your career, and, and use it to, to interact and to network and to, to add value and to inspire and to motivate and to give back. And, and what the funny thing happens is when you're doing it and you're actively engaged in it, the clients find you, <laughs> the jobs find you. <laughs> you're no longer having to look because you're out there and people are just colliding with you. It, it's funny you say that because I, a lot of times, I, I guess I still have the old old mindset when it comes to LinkedIn. Like if one of our employees is updating their LinkedIn page, I'm like, uh-oh, must be no looking. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, just updated their, they just updated their job description and they're being a little more active on there. They must be looking for a job. <laughs> well, you know, Jamie, it's, I've seen a huge, a huge, huge change in in the marketplace in that regard. You know, at one time, CEOs would come to us and say, okay, Donna, you know, make me look great on LinkedIn. I want to have my story out there. I want to, you know, I really want to look at like an expert. Uh, and then I would say, you know what, you know, you're looking to recruit better talent. You want to find better partnerships. You want, you want investors. Why don't we look at your employees' profiles and let's optimize them as well and back then it was no, 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 no. If, <laughs> if we make them look good they'll get poached but it's changed i can't tell you how many companies are calling me even small companies and they're and they say look i know that my employees are being looked at by potential partners and clients and prospects um media opportunities and they look like they're looking and I don't want them to look like they're they're looking. Help me create profiles that have our messaging, our company messaging. Let's make them look like they're you know the rock stars that they are because they're my number one assets. And having them out there, I'm going to attract better everything. So it's been a real flip of a switch. No, that, that's really interesting. Um, let's let's go into the specifics of the accounting world now. So I know we've been talking in general terms. So I'm a little curious about the accounting customers you work with versus the other customers you work with. What differences are you seeing? And then um, what ways do you feel like you can help them um, more than maybe some of your other clients? You know, my, my accounting clients are very left-brained, <laughs> very left-brained. And the writing part, even you know, filling out our questionnaire and telling their story, they, there's always a bit of a struggle. Uh, I, and I, I, I sort of, you know, I think it's the left brain aspect, you know, they're good with the numbers. But when it comes to telling that that type of enthralling story, it's, it's hard for them. So, you know, I feel like that's where we can we really help 
It's being able to talk and, and, and understand, you know, why are you doing this? What do you stand for? You know, how is it that you're, how do you help in other ways? You know, what differentiates you? And like talking through, sometimes they're amazed at the story that's there. It's already there. They just didn't even see it. Like they didn't even recognize their strengths because it's, they sit so close, they, they couldn't see it in any defined, focused way. And so, you know, I think in that regard, it's it's telling a much more robust, much more intriguing, much more interesting, compelling story. So that, you know, one, you know, it has the keywords, they're going to turn up and search. You know, people look at it and they feel really good about that individual. They have this confidence. They're going to get that traction that they're looking for. And their phone rings. Is that kind of a one and done kind of a project with that stuff? Or how does that evolve and get maintenance? What's the what's the cadence of that maintenance look like of that storytelling? I mean, outside of obviously, yeah. you know, what I what I think I hear you talking about is like the initial profile and, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But then it's got to be augmented, I assume, by like relevant articles and podcasts and YouTube videos and other mm -hmm. things that you're doing to kind of support what you're talking. Is that how you kind of maintenance it and keep that up? Yeah. Well, you know what? We, we train, we train our clients on how to update. Um, some do come back and say, hey, can, hey, can you do this for me? <laughs> There's others that, you know, I, I don't put people on a, a subscription. You know, ultimately, when they're ready for an update, they come back to us. You know, so it's, I, I, I know it's a sort of a contrary <laughs> way of doing things now. I mean, everyone wants everyone on a, you know, a monthly subscription service. And, and I look at it, you know, let's, let's get that foundation set. Let's, let's, let's tell that story and let's show you how to do it. And then, all right, now I'll, I'll shoot out some emails reminding, Hey, it's been a few months. It's been a, you know, it's been a few years, but when they come back, they come back. And that's when, you know, we, we revamp for them and we, you know, we have those returning client services. So in that initial meeting with them, then with your initial project with them, do you give them advice on keeping the site updated? Because one of the things that I think is really important is is lean into your strengths when it comes mm -hmm. to LinkedIn. So like if if our marketing lady came to me and said, Jamie, can you write an article about this? It would probably take mm -hmm. me six months right. to write because I'd overthink <laughs> it. I would worry about my grammar. I would just be checking it and reading it and doing all this stuff. Where if she came to me and said, hey, can you record a two-minute video just talking about this? I would have it done in five minutes because that's where I feel most comfortable. And I think that um, I would find that to be super important is, is lean into where you're comfortable. And some people, it might just be linking articles. Like you find an article you like because you love to read, just put a link on that to your LinkedIn. Is that something you'd recommend or how do you get them to keep their page updated? You know, there's to me, there's there's the two aspects. There's the profile, right? And it's it's making sure that it doesn't age, right? It it doesn't get totally out of date. And it's it's that reminder of, hey, pop in there and just, you know, talk about what, what just recently happened, you know, what what have you learned? What are you doing? What accomplishment do you have? So there's there's that. And then there's the the feed, right? The posting. And and I really love that idea of, you know, leaning into your strengths. You know, at the other on, on the other side though, Jamie, I think it's worth stating there, you know, the LinkedIn algorithm is very, very picky. And if all you do is share other people's posts, you're never going to get a lot of traction because those posts don't do well. Okay. So if you if you're finding yourself like, oh, I like what this person you know posted, I'm just going to hit the share button because that's easy. And then you, you're scratching your head. You're like, why am I not getting a lot of <laughs> likes? And it's because you shared, and and, the, and within the LinkedIn algorithm, yeah, it's 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 very low. So what you'd want to do is instead, you know, maybe comment and say, hey, that's a great, you know, wonderful article, really love it. You know, click the article and then share the article directly. So you're not sharing the other person's post, but you're sharing that article. And then you could do a hat tip and, and call out the person and say, hey, thanks so much for, you know, originally sharing this information. If you do tag a person in a post, they better come back and comment. If they don't comment, boom, that, po that post is going to go right down the toilet. So that's the other thing. If you do tag a person, that's another little crazy you know, quirk about the LinkedIn algorithm is make sure that if you tag a person in a post, you maybe message them or call them and say, hey, I just, I just tagged you. Can you please make sure? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I think it goes back to what Adam said earlier, and I think this is just listening to Adam talk here. Like this is a mistake I've made with my LinkedIn over the last couple of years. Is if someone reaches out to me and it sounds like something I might be interested in, I just accept it. Like I think my LinkedIn network has grown, but like the people I actually know in there has probably gone way down. Where like I think Adam probably have much better luck on that. Where if someone were to share something, he actually knows that person and has a true connection with them, and they probably would comment versus me, who's just like a person that's linked in me once, and I'm gonna retweet their <laughs> re uh, re link in their uh, comment, and it's like, like who is this again? I've, I've never talked to them before. So, I but but I think she's saying you can too. comment and create that relationship after the fact. So it doesn't have to be even on the front end. It's like, you go ahead and accept it. And instead of sharing it, just say, hey, awesome article, great point about this or that. And then what you're saying, Donna, what I heard you say is like, and then you got to hope that they reply back. Otherwise that doesn't, it, the, it doesn't, uh, it's not as effective. Right so, right, so if a person shares an article and you like the article, don't just share the post click on the article, find the original URL, post that URL to the article directly. And then in that post, you can tag that person who had originally shared it. You know, to just to, just because that's nice, right? Yeah, so <laughs> Not to, thanks, Donna, for sharing this. And yeah, then I thanks. share what you already shared. And then hopefully you comment below it. No problem, Jamie, glad you liked it. And then, then it becomes a high yeah. visibility mm, post. That, you got uh, it. There you go. That right there is the money. Yep. So thir 30 minutes <laughs> in, you got your golden you? nugget. So if you hung on this long, you <laughs> just nailed it right there. So that's awesome. And so, and, and just to be clear, and I know this is a little bit of a cheat, so take this how you want, but just saying technically you would offer that as a service as well like helping to troll somebody's linkedin for them and help them kind of get some of that stuff out i mean do you do that in coordination we, with them do you do that for them um how does that work no we, we, we you know what i would love to offer that service it's it's not an easy one to offer um, and we do, we train people. I work with a few high level executives and I do that for them. But for most people, it's not something you can truly outsource. Okay. I mean, you can try to outsource it. You can find someone in India to do it for five bucks an hour. <laughs> and then they're posting the exact same link every day. You know, it, it's You're just, out of luck, Jamie. It's, it's, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to outsource in an authentic manner. I find. Yeah, you know, no, that's, that's I agree. I, I mean, I think that would be difficult. I mean, I think the only, that's why I was curious because I think it could be accomplished maybe by somebody that was on your team, um, you know, that kind of was running alongside you and doing those kind of things. But yeah, it'd be hard for somebody that's, uh, you know, doesn't know you well, doesn't know what you're doing extremely well to, you know, comment and post and share and do things like that. You know, and here's, here's the thing, right? I don't believe, I mean, my, my, it's not that I don't believe, I, I know this as a fact, you don't have to be active on LinkedIn every day. You don't, you don't have to post every day. Mm -hmm. Mic drop, it's, yes, if you want to be a huge influencer, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, yes, absolutely. All right, my, my advice does not extend to him. <laughs> but to an average person, an average professional, if you post once a week, that's amazing. If you post once every two weeks, th that you're doing so much better than the vast majority of people out there. I mean, LinkedIn recently released stats that said less than 1% of their monthly users actually create content. Wow. Less than 1%. But what this, what, what this should tell you, though, low barrier <laughs> of entry, right? Some low-hanging fruit there, guys. You know, if you were the one, if you are that one person who decides to post, and again, I'm not telling you to post every day, but if you post once a week with a, you know, an interesting article that you found or some advice that you, you came upon or something that happened that you think is interesting and worthy of sharing. And then, you know, maybe you pop back in every a couple of other days and you just engage with the content that's on your feed. That right there is massive. And it's totally doable, even for an extremely busy professional. 
Yeah, I think in the, the very least, hopefully everybody listening to this podcast has opened up their LinkedIn page and looked at their profile, looked at what they're what they're putting out there and, and come up with one or two changes they can make. But I think this has been a, a great episode. I know I'm going to do that exact thing once we pop up, off here. So um, go check my LinkedIn profile and see how I'm doing. <laughs> here, I'll, but, I'll um... give a real quick tip, okay? So right. those of you who are looking at your profile, all right, like oh, just really, I thought, like two I quick I thought you were going to pick on Jamie's. Okay. Okay, I, I was. I was like, this is going to no, be great. No, no, no. Um, okay, all right. We'll, we'll pretend this isn't but, Jamie's. Go ahead. Sorry. But this is not Jamie's. I'm not looking at Jamie's. <laughs> but wait, wait, look at your, your background image. And if it's kind of grayish green and striped, it means you didn't upload a background image. Get something up there. Something that, you know, illustrates your brand. Maybe your company logo. Put something up there. The other thing is, you know, look at your profile picture, make sure it looks nice. I mean, that's like, you know, social media 101, but still consistently, it's typically pretty bad. So adjust that. And then do look at your headline. The headline, the default headline is your current title and your current company. But what a headline is that? That doesn't, that doesn't compel anyone to want to learn more or read more about you. And, and that headline follows you. So no matter what you're doing on LinkedIn, it's, it's there. It's right there next to your picture, your name, there's your headline. So you want it to be engaging and attractive. So, you know, visit my website and access my LinkedIn headline generator. It's, it's this online app. It's totally free. You just, you just hit a couple buttons, enter a couple adjectives, a couple nouns, and it spits out a really great looking headline. You can copy it. You paste it in there. You're going to get more views. You're going to get more hits and more opportunities. I can tell by Adam's eyes that when you were talking there, he was looking at my LinkedIn page. So how did I do? How, 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 how uh, great? <laughs> no, I was actually looking at mine, but yes, I was. I was like pulling it up, trying to get the thing to load as you were talking. I'm like, is that on there? Is that a check? Check. I don't know about that. I mean, my my uh, my picture is a caricature, so um, I don't know if that's professional enough for you, Donna. So. Um, if it's a, like, oh, there it is. Two. Yeah, it is. A, well, you know what? Uh oh, here we go. Did you see the look on her Lincoln face? Stays. So if you're listening like to it. this, you I can't. Like <laughs> if you're if you're if you're if you're just listening, the look that Donna just gave me after she apparently just looked at my LinkedIn was like, no good. <laughs> yeah, bad grade. Well, LinkedIn states in there in its terms of usage, it can't be a cartoon character. It can't be a logo. It has to be a photograph. Uh -huh. So, we're all in trouble. So, whole firm I gotta is tell logos. you, I think you're better looking than this, this caricature. <laughs> I don't get that very often at all, so oh, I will take that. Um, uh, so that's why the the caricature is always on there. So okay, so we uh, we got to work on that. Then we will definitely be talking soon, Donna. <laughs> yeah. <I'm not> <laughs> Awesome. So yeah, like I said, I think this was a really uh, great, great podcast and I know I've got a lot out of it. So um, I'll give you one last shot here, the final, final thoughts or final tips for our listeners and then we will end this podcast. Start uh, with you, Donna. Yeah, you know, final tip, I would say, um, make sure you have LinkedIn on your mobile device, put it on your phone, make sure you've got that in there. And then, you know, when you're out and about, or maybe you're watching TV and your thumb like starts to move towards the Instagram <laughs> icon, Say stop, stop! I'm gonna I'm gonna click on LinkedIn for a change, and and click on that LinkedIn, open up the app, and you know scroll through. I mean, at the very least, just scroll through and and challenge yourself to just interact with three posts. Comment, like, don't share because you're not gonna get any traction that way. <laughs> but, but comment and like. And, and I think you'll find that if you do that with, you know, some regularity, you make sure your profile looks good, you got that great headline, LinkedIn is suddenly going to make a lot more sense. Great. That's a, that's a great tip. Um, Adam, how about you? Uh, call Donna. <laughs> like, check out our website and <laughs> see. Uh, yeah, I think, I, you know, really, honestly, a lot of folks, like I said, once they figure out what they're doing, it always comes back to now, how do I find people? And so marketing is a big question that we get asked all the time. And I do think that social media obviously is becoming uh, more and more a part of that. And LinkedIn as a professional is important. And it has it has gotten a lot cooler and a lot more effective over the last couple of years. So I, I have seen big things happening with it. So I know there's flashier stuff right now that people are using, but um, 
you know, I've been really impressed with what LinkedIn's doing, and and I agree to to set up a a shop there is going to be really important. So it's worth the effort. You know, I, you know, and I think with LinkedIn, it's it's you know, when you look at TikTok and you look at the reels on Instagram, a lot of us are adults, and we just don't want to be like you know pointing at you know <laughs> bubbles and dancing around. It's just, like it's not what we want to do. LinkedIn is where you can go. You can be an adult. <laughs> You can feel a little bit more comfortable and you can like have some really, you know, good relationships and, and some fruitful ones at that. That definitely sold me because I do not like recording too much. <laughs> Whenever we have to do it for someone, I feel, feel so awkward doing the uh, Oh, yeah. The, it's, not, it's not fun. Yeah. The dance moves <laughs> yeah. and the bob in your head. Three yeah. 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 yeah that's, that's, just, that's just not me. <laughs> People are like looking at your face going, hmm, I bet he's dancing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jamie does not want to be doing this. <laughs> you can't, you can't right. disguise that. So true. Great. Well, yeah, definitely appreciate having you on. We will put all of your information in the show notes as well as in the, um, the YouTube notes below. So hopefully we reach out to you. And like Adam said, I know we will be soon. So really appreciate you joining us. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy this podcast? Visit our website at summitcpa.net to get more tips and strategies for achieving business success. We're here to be a resource in this ever-changing industry. 